for my next presenter, he's, we're going to be talking about how systems integrators are helping operators uh, in this region and part of the rest of the world to cope with digital enablement. And I'd like to call up Mr. Manish Vyas, who is the President of Communications, Media and Entertainment Business and CEO of Network Services at Tech Mahindra. Manish, welcome back. <laughs> Sorry to meet you, Tony. I'm happy with the chair, by the way. You're lucky because you're a lot taller than me. I'm sort of, I can't even reach the bottom, the bottom part, but we'll survive. Look, you've been in the telecom services industry uh, for a long time. I won't say how many years because you don't look nearly old enough. Um, you started off here. It's changed a lot in the time you and I have been around. What do you think has happened recently that's changing things and where do you see it moving to in the future? You know, I, I think uh, if you look at the telecom industry, sometimes calling it a telecom service provider industry, I believe is a misnomer. First mistake. Right? I agree, I agree. Because come to think of it, what has happened, particularly 3G and maybe 4G more so, it has actually become a platform service provider. Because the good old days, telecom service was voice and data connectivity. Yeah. However, that connectivity now is being used by an Uber to build a service. So the service is the Uber, Whereas what the telco provides, the so-called telco, is really a platform. So B2C and B2B service enablement and a platform for making that happen is the quintessential responsibility now that the service provider has. We know that you've played a very important role in the rollout of 3G, 2G, 3G, 4G, now 5G services for telcos. But how is your company helping telcos achieve their own digital enablement? What, what's the driver for them and, and how are you able to help as a company? I think uh, essentially playing to our strengths. Uh, we were created as a company, as a joint venture by BT and Mahindra 30 years ago. Yeah. And how did we start? By only doing one thing, which was software. Where is the world moving to? <laughs> only software. If there is one thing that will differentiate the wannabes versus the, the companies that will dominate the world, it is going to be how do you curate, architect, and write software, right? right? I mean, all the web scale companies have proven beyond, beyond doubt. So what we are doing is we are leveraging our three strengths. Uh, of course, technology is there. But essentially, how do you write software in a quick, in a more agile fashion? Two, we are a people company. Tech Mahindra is now a very proud family of 120,000 people worldwide, right? About 50% of that, almost 50% of that is in the telecom and the media industry. So we are clearly going deep into the people aspect. And the third, uh, it's all about processes because it's all about uh, changes. Yeah. So we are going to focus on process, people, and software very specifically. We'll of course work with unbelievable cloud companies and hardware companies. But as far as our transformation is concerned, so that we could help others transform, we are playing in this space. Those changes are going to be uh, yeah. barriers for a lot of companies. We know that. But for the Middle East and North Africa region, what specifically are you doing to help them in their 5G and digital journeys? Well, I, I would say we're doing less than what we want to do. I think the key question is, in what areas would the help uh, or the help would be needed? Yeah. So let's try and address this uh, First of all, I think that we are talking about an industry that is 143 year old. It has got enough legacy, and sometimes the word is not liked, but, but it's a fact. Uh, there are processes, technologies, systems, hardware, everything installed. So two years ago, we created a little uh, strategy, and we used three for very, very simple English words, right? And you would relate with these three English words. Run, change, and grow. What we say is that a service provider needs to run their existing operation better right. so that it could help a company change or itself change with technology and otherwise, eventually to try and help grow. So what we are doing as far as the 5G is concerned, we are essentially saying, uh, and some of my meetings this week is all about saying, I can help you only with three. You put a gun on my head, I will not solve a fourth problem. I'll only solve three, which is help you run better, change faster, and grow greater. They're the three important parts. Absolutely. Only, in fact, you ask a CEO middle of the night, <laughs> what keeps you awake, uh, chances are they will only say run, change, and grow. I'm going to ask one of our network operators <laughs> that question a bit later on. What are the major challenges left that you think customers are going to face in the 5G era? And I'm talking about telco operators in particular. Yeah, I think, uh, look, I think there are two types of challenges. 
I actually quite liked what uh, His Excellency, the Director General, Mr. Mansouri said this morning. I think he said four Ps. Yeah. And the fourth P that he added to public-private uh, pu uh, people was partnerships. Uh, I think that's going to be a big challenge. It's, not, it's easier said than done. Absolutely. Right? Partnership, collaboration with the outside world has not been the mainstay strategy of, of many it's, it's not part of the telco DNA. That's there, the problem. There you go. So I think 5G, um, you know, uh, is really about um, uh, not just connectivity anymore. It is, if, if I may want to be a bit cheeky here, I would say it's about four Cs, right? It's about competitive edge. Right. It's about um, uh, your customer experience. Uh, it is about um, the consumer, of course. Uh, and last but not the least, it is about a company's very existence. And I'm not saying telcos in this case. It is about the enterprises. Yeah. So the 5G challenge is about to reimagine the service, not from your lens of a mobile phone or a connectivity, but from the lens of a customer, both consumer and enterprise at this point. Yeah, you don't hear much about that. We don't hear people saying, we talk to 10,000 consumers to find out what they want. We do, we do have net promoter scores and we send out messages saying, do you rate our service 1 to 10? But do we ever go back and say, what is it you particularly want? You know, it's like this. I'm a proud father of two daughters, 10 and 8. They don't, oh, they I don't live. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm already dealing with almost a teenage <laughs> problem. See, they don't, they don't study the way I did or you did. Nope. Right? How can the enterprise today or a telecom service provider operate the same way as they were operating in the past. So one of the most important thing is going to be the mindset change. Yep. Good news though, Tony, is as I travel across the world, 200 nights, I do think there is a wind of change happening. Look at this beautiful conference, uh, you know, uh, thanks to uh, our dear friend, Mr. Bokar. 5G right up front and center, I think it's a huge, massive step forward in my view. Yeah, I have to admit, coming here many years ago, I always thought that uh, the Middle East region was a little bit behind, perhaps Europe, and then Africa, uh, Asia was uh, jumping ahead. But I come back now in the last two years, and I, and I really think that this is a complete turnaround. And it's events like this where everybody seems to get together and agree on where they're going. You don't see that very often in other regions of the world. Is the co no. competition factor no, is dramatic. I think, I think this room and, and what I have been hearing since morning is extremely, extremely refreshing. Very refreshing. Last question for you is, we talk about all the challenges facing your customers, but what about internal challenges? Do you have to change the way you're thinking? How is your company coping with moving through the Gs and now into the elaborate digital world? Oh, no, no, we have no challenges. It's a smooth ride for us, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, um, no, I think it's a very interesting question because we have so many things to do. We have improved and increased and expanded our portfolio of service over the years to a great extent. So our challenge now is about what we will not do. Ah. That decision becomes a very important. Last week, we took a pledge uh, where we will be training about 40,000 people between our enterprise and telecom business over the next two years, largely around 5G. We have about 14 industry verticals. That and, the, and, and, the, and my unit, which is the telecom unit, all have gotten together and said we will be adopting uh, 5G use cases across the world going forward. So our challenge is going to be to continue to invest in skills, uh, focus on prioritization, and ultimately try and look at the world in a more holistic, integrated fashion than my little silo of telecom or media or manufacturing or what have you. And hope you get it right the first time. And hopefully we'll get it at some point. <laughs> Manish, thank you very much. Well done. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Manish.